All right, welcome back to The Breakdown. Uh, today I have with me Miss Julie Woodruff, and thank hey. you for joining us today, Julie. Thanks for inviting me. So today uh, we are breaking down the message from Sunday, and today we had a guest speaker in our Holy Spirit uh, series. His name is Nathan Lino from Texas, and the cool thing about Nathan is that God is doing something unbelievable at his church. This revival is happening there, much like God is doing here at Long Hollow in the season, and it was just really cool hearing uh, that God is not limited to, to one place doing one move of God, but he is doing this all over the place. Uh, and I was really encouraged. Yeah, by I was that. encouraged too. It's always fun to hear mm-hmm. of God's activity because sometimes when you're here, you think we're the only ones experiencing right. yeah, exactly. this, but God's bigger than yeah, just exactly. here. And what's it? cool is yeah. we have been praying that we would not be the only yes. ones to experience this. Yeah. It's cool because the, the revival at Nathan's church actually began before the yeah. revival started here in Long Hollow. And then as we've been praying for God to do something in the life of churches all over the country, this just encouraged me uh, that he can, and he will, and he is. Like, I've literally been seeing stories from all kinds of places from all over the country. God's doing amazing things. But that's today, a- oh, yeah. I'm sorry, yeah, I was no, just going to say, that's actually how Nathan and Pastor Robbie got hooked oh, up, no way. was well, just you the, you know, the both of our churches right. going through the exact same thing, so somebody it. hooked them up, so that's it. exciting. That's so cool. Well, mm-hmm. listen, before we get into this, if that means if you go to another church, man, be praying for your church, mm-hmm. uh, be praying for your pastor, be praying for your staff, uh, be praying for yourself. God wants to do something unbelievable there. So today, he started off in Ephesians chapter 5, verses 15 through 18. Julie, can you read that for I us? I will. Pay careful attention then to how you live, not as unwise people, but as wise, making the most of the time because the days are evil. Mm -hmm. So don't be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is and don't get drunk with wine, which leads to reckless living, but be filled by the Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making music with your heart to the Lord. I think I'm giving you some extra, but I'll finish. Giving thanks (laughs) always for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Mm, Man, I I love this passage. And um, he spent a lot of time kind of diving into the fact that the days or evil. Yeah. Uh, I think we would all agree. Like, we don't even have to break that down what that looks like today. I mean, in, in my own life, in the past year, I mean, it's just hard thing after hard thing after hard thing. I don't, I don't know if you've experienced the oh, same absolutely, thing. Oh, absolutely. Yes. And I think you just look around and can realize that our culture is in chaos. Right. And it's um, the news you can't even watch without right. just going, we live in a broken, yeah. fallen world. Right. And that is... Because sin entered the world right. all the way back in right. Genesis 3. So as a result yeah. of that, we all continue to fight with that. Yeah. And then he goes on to talk about how, but we need to be filled with the Spirit. And I love that he gave some context yeah. to this passage here. So uh, when this was written, it was written to believers in Ephesus. And not just believers in Ephesus, but faithful believers in Ephesus talking about how the days are evil, but be filled with the Spirit. So this is kind of our response to the days being evil, Mm -hmm. whether it's back in Bible times or today. Obviously, you can see how Scripture is so just as relevant today as it was when it was written. I mean, it's the sovereignty of God there. Uh, But our response as believers and faithful believers at that is to be filled with the spirit, and he kind of asked the question: What does that mean to be filled with the spirit? I'm putting you on the I'm putting you on the spot, Julie. Do you remember yeah. what he said there? Hey, well, I loved what he said. He said you can be sealed, right. but not right. filled. Right. And so to be sealed, uh, he said, is a permanent right. thing. Mm-hmm. To be filled is not necessarily permanent, right. it's more temporary. And so right. I thought that was an interesting context to break that down mm-hmm. as far as being sealed because we're all sealed right. when we ask Jesus to be our right. Lord and Savior. Mm-hmm. But filling is something right. that we ask for continually. Right. Yeah, you're right. And I'll be completely honest. Like, I've been in church my whole life. Like, I joke about how if the lights were on, I was there, and we were turning on the lights half the time. Like, mm-hmm. we were just there all the time. And, and I gave my life to Christ at a young age. So then I was sealed. But I, if I'm honest with you, there have been seasons of my life, more than I'd like to admit, that I have not been filled with Absolutely. the Holy Spirit. And I, that was just never even a thought growing up to me. Well, I just I was, assumed I I'm sealed, I'm filled, you know, we're good to go. I never even thought it. Yeah. But. Yeah, I think absolutely. I don't know that we were even taught what no. filling of the Holy Spirit right. looked like. Right. And so we just thought it was one and the same. Right. And I want to encourage you to go back and watch uh, the message if you hadn't already, because he gave you context to this this thought of you're sealed at salvation. But then he even gave scripture in order of asking for this filling 
uh, of the Holy Spirit. And if I'm honest with you, and if you're honest with yourself, there are times that we can fake it, right? Uh, like there are times yeah. that we can go through the motions and we can show up in the right places and we can say the right things and we can serve and we can love people and we can have a smile on our face. And if nobody else knows your heart but you, you know, they're going to say, oh man, they love Jesus and they are filled with that Holy Spirit when you're faking it and you're dying on the inside. Yeah. Um, so so that's just something that this journey I've been on, you know, the past you know year or so is, man, I can do and say all the right things, but am I pursuing the Lord? Mm-hmm. Am I filled with the Spirit? Mm-hmm. Let me ask you this, Julie. How can can somebody be filled with the Spirit? So you've been sealed, right? You, you've maybe surrendered your life to Christ. Here's your Lord and Savior. Um, nothing can ever snatch you out of His hands, right? You are sealed, but you're, you feel like you're dying on the inside yeah. and you're lonely or you're depressed or however that may be fleshing out. That's not, that's not the only ways there, but uh, how can you be I, filled? I loved what he talked about when he, he took us back to Luke, actually, and he talked about to ask uh, to right. seek, to knock, right. mm-hmm. um, and and that we ask for a filling right. of the Spirit. It's not just assumed. It's something right. that we need. And right. so we say, Lord, would you fill me? And, and Andrea, as we've been doing this series on the Holy Spirit mm-hmm. and talking about prayer, I have found myself every single right. morning, right. Lord, today, would mm-hmm. you fill me with your Spirit so that right. I lived a Spirit-filled life, right. so that the, yeah. even the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faith, Self-control. Self-control. I, I only know, know that in like that. song version. Sing that no, yeah. but, but no joke, you just begin to yeah. think. And, and it doesn't mean, and he talked about this today, that we're perfect. Right. No, but be. that we are filled and that we are living supernaturally right. out of the Spirit's power, right. not our own. Right. What I love is how parallel the story of what God did at Nathan's church and what God's been doing at our church, how similar they were, different in some ways, but very similar as well. So Nathan was talking about how they had all this tragedy that happened. He was ready to give up. His church was ready to give up. He was actually praying. Let me see if I can find it. He was praying. He began to pray because he was just so burnt out and tired. Uh, he, he prayed, God, rescue me or change me rescue my church or take me home today. He just began to pray that and pray that and pray that. Uh, And then God put it on his heart that they need to have this fresh outpouring of the Holy Spirit through prayer. Uh, And they started a prayer gathering just like, you know, we started a prayer gathering here at Long Hollow. You know what's interesting? I just thought about it. amazing. Ours started out of tragedy too. Exactly. If you'll recall. Yeah, I know. So that Mm -hmm. has got to be encouraging to all of us because those things that we think are the absolute worst, that how can God even be in this, is really sometimes what God uses. Right to begin. No, you're exactly right. And this this wasn't in today's high. message, but just a, a rhythm that I'm starting to see consistently in my life for what God's doing is that there is purpose in my pain mm-hmm. um, and there's purpose in your pain. Mm-hmm. And uh, man, what you, what you may be going through right now is really, really hard. Mm-hmm. And I'm so sorry that you're walking through that, whatever hurt and pain uh, that that is. But uh, I have hope in my life because I have Jesus as my savior. Yeah. And even in the darkest of days, I know that there's hope. Even if I can't see it, even if I can't feel it, even if it doesn't seem like it's there, I know that it's true, uh, that I have hope in my life. And then now I'm on the other side. We were just talking about one. I'm on the other side Mm -hmm. of some very dark seasons and I'm looking back and I'm seeing God's faithfulness and I'm experiencing that hope that I knew was there, that I maybe even couldn't see or feel in the moment and there's purpose in in whatever you're going through and you know Jenny and I we we've been talking man would we ever want to go through some of these things again not at all mm-hmm. but God was doing something in the midst of them. He was growing our faith. He was shaping us and molding us. We kind of think of it like like a diamond. You know, diamonds are precious and valuable and beautiful, but they come from this place of darkness and heat and pressure, right? I mean, it's a a painful process to take what used to be a lump of coal and make it something that is beautiful and priceless and valuable like a diamond. Uh, And I just say that to say, whatever we walk through in life, Mm -hmm. a lot of times we ask God, why? Why? God, why are you doing this? And pastor even encouraged us a couple weeks ago, maybe don't ask why, but ask God, what do you have for me right. in the midst of this? Uh, and God you know, is working in the midst of your pain too. Uh, doesn't make it hurt any less. And again, we're so sorry that, that you are walking through that, but God uh, is working and there's hope because of Jesus. Uh, and just like the tragedy that sparked the revival in Nathan's church, it was some tragedies that sparked the revival here at Long Hollow 
Um, and God is working in the midst of that. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we don't know how to pray. He said, right. ask, seek. Yeah. Sometimes it's just right. saying, Jesus, right. I need you. Right. And um, just admitting that because right. maybe today you are even at the end of yourself and right. you're going, I don't know what to do. Just right. Jesus, I need you. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, when, when Nathan found himself in that spot in his church and he was praying, God, change something or change me, change something or take me home. Uh, they said they began to pray for this filling of the Holy Spirit, this fresh outpouring. And his words, he said, the Lord broke loose. Mm -hmm. He said, I the Lord that. broke her yeah. loose. And just like we're experiencing here at Long Hall, they began to see salvations. They began to see baptisms. They began to see people called into ministry. They began to see people commissioned into the mission field. People who had, didn't, hadn't had jobs in forever were all of a sudden getting jobs by the end of the week, uh, families yeah. were restored. There were miracles happening. Listen, y'all, I, I, there was a staff member uh, who came to me a couple days ago and said, Andrew, I just found out I have less than a year left with my father. And she was heartbroken. Mm -hmm. And we stopped and we prayed. Her life group began to pray. And day by day by day, before the week was done, her father was healed. Oh, it wow. went from being, I have a year left, to every single day his condition got better. And now, with Praise diet and medication, he's going to be okay. Uh, from It went from cirrhosis of the liver in one year to now he's going to wow. be okay with a Thank couple steps. Lord. So that is a miracle. That was not yeah, a misdiagnosis. That mm -hmm. was a miracle. Uh, and I want to encourage you, whatever you're walking through, pray for this fresh, this fresh outpouring of the Holy Spirit, this, this filling, ask for it, seek it. Uh, and God will be giving it, will give it to you. And this is not name it, claim it, you know what I'm saying? Oh, right. I, you know, I'm gonna start praying. I went up a million dollars. No, no, it's not that. Um, but I had to start praying, God, give me the desires of your heart. And then I have to trust him yeah. that he's going to change my heart and that he's going to be faithful and he is going to be faithful. So, uh, Julie, you got anything left? Anything, I don't anything think else? So. I, no. Listen, I'm just about yeah, to start preaching good. here on the breakdown. Yeah, I know. Uh, well, listen, uh, I'll, this is my application for you. I want to, to challenge you for the next seven days to pray for this fresh outpouring of the Holy Spirit on your life. Uh, it may start with repentance. You may have some things today that you need to get right with Jesus. And the cool thing is he already knows about it. Mm -hmm. Even though we try to hide it, he already knows about it. He loves you anyways. So you can take that to him. Uh, so it may start with repentance and then start to pray that he will fill you and guide you and lead you and direct you. Uh, and let's just see what the next seven days looks like. It's exciting. All right, well, listen, thank you for joining us this week on The Breakdown.